Hey guys, recently I did a video showing how to do an AM alignment on this radio using a swept RF generator and a scope. At the end of that video I offered to show you how you can do an AM alignment using a non-swept RF generator and a VTVM. But before I do that, I thought I'd do a whole video just on VTVMs. I don't think I've talked all that much about them before and uh, I think they deserve a whole segment. So what I've laid out here are the four that I currently own. Uh, an Ico and two RCAs and a Hewlett Packard. This one on the left is the one I've been using most lately because it's been fully restored and calibrated and it's working fairly well. That's also a fairly common model if you look around on eBay. Uh, there's usually at least one for sale. Now, what a VTVM stands for is vacuum tube voltmeter, as opposed to a more conventional VOM, like this guy, which is a Simpson VOM. The main difference is that these you plug in, these run off electricity, and there's actually a vacuum tube that uh, is what this input goes to which gives it a very high input impedance and high accuracy whereas this the input just goes to a resistor network and drives the meter directly there's no a vacuum tube or uh, other device to buffer or amplify the incoming signal what that means is if you're measuring a sensitive or low level signal and you put this probe on it it's going to load down that circuit. This one isn't so bad. It's 100,000 ohms per volt. What's much more common is about 20,000 ohms per volt. Uh, which is a, you know, a pretty substantial load when you're talking about RF or IF uh, circuitry. Uh, so that's why you really need one of these. Now you might be thinking, well, I'll just use my digital multimeter. That should be superior because it's newer, right? Well, not really. These... Uh, also generally use a resistor divider network on the input and they can load down the, uh, the circuitry. Also when you're uh, doing certain operations like alignment it's a lot easier to see a needle swinging back and forth to find a peak value than to see some flashing numbers on the display because this only updates maybe once a second and you may easily miss that peak value and you have to keep going back and forth in it. It's just not uh, not quite the same experience, so I really recommend getting one of these. Uh, typically, uh, a low-end model like this, uh, you probably get one unrestored for 20 bucks, maybe. I doubt I paid a whole lot more than that for this one. Uh, likewise for this RCA Volt Ohmist. Senior Volt Ohmist paid a little bit more because it has a nice big meter on it. And uh, I'll talk about the HP a little bit later. Something else you want to make sure of when, you get, uh, when you're shopping for one of these is tr really try to get one with the probes. Especially if you've got one with one of these types of inputs. Like this. Because they use a special probe. Here's an original RCA. Uh, it's a bit damaged. Uh, and since I was lucky enough to score a newer one that was unused still in the original packaging made by Viz VIZ I believe Viz bought out the RCA instrument line maybe sometime in the 70s I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between Viz manufactured items versus RCA but I think there is some difference in price I believe the RCA branded stuff sells for a little bit more but I think electrically and uh, quality wise it's pretty much the same. So the reason these probes are important is not only the the Amphenol mic connector at the end but also there's actually a switch on this probe and there's a resistor in here and maybe some other components and you need to switch this switch depending on whether you're measuring DC or AC ohms Uh, if you can't find one of these, don't have one, 
if you look at the documentation, they show you what's inside one of these. So if you get creative, it shouldn't be too difficult to make one on your uh, make one from scratch. Get yourself some coax. You can find these connectors a few places to sell them. Look on eBay. I was able to find a few for some other projects. Get yourself a plastic tube, a simple slider switch, and then whatever components need to go inside here. And maybe get a, a probe pointer from another old probe and maybe hot glue it or epoxy it on the end. Or you can get a model like this, which just has three banana jacks. Ground, DC, and AC ohms. So instead of one probe with a switch to go between DC and AC ohms, it's actually a separate probe. And these are just simply banana jacks. Just a single conductor insulated wire. And then just a, a tube with a metal clinky probe at the end. Nothing special. There are several models in the volt, volt ohmist line. That's <laughs> volt for you know measuring volts and it measures ohms. And they just made this cute name of volt ohmist out of it. There's a junior model. There's a standard model. There's a senior model, and I believe there's a master model. I've only seen that I think once on eBay. Uh, electrically, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. Uh, I. I think the reason they call it the senior is because the display is larger and older folks maybe can read it more easily. It has a nice big print on here. I'm not positive about that. Uh, otherwise, I think the electronics in either of these two uh, are identical. Uh, they have the same ranges. Oh, and that's another nice thing about these is they generally go to 15 volts, 1500 volts DC and 4000 volts AC. Whereas a lot of cheapo meters have far less than that. Like, I think my digital meter here, I think it's like 500 volts DC max. And same with this little cheapo guy that I blew out not too long ago. Which, uh, it says a thousand, but I think I had about 800 on it. It just fried the thing. It just it doesn't even light up anymore. It just makes this horrible high-pitched sound and you just get some random characters on display. So <laughs> when you're poking around tube equipment, you have a very hard time damaging one of these, whereas you can very, very easily fry a digital meter like that. Uh, so any one of these three I recommend. Uh, fairly inexpensive. Not a whole lot can go wrong with them, fairly easy to work on, and they work well. But, if you come across one of these, this is, I guess you call it the Cadillac of VTVMs. It's the 410C by Hewlett Packard. It's also a 410B, which is uh, an older model, not quite as uh, fancy or modern. This is a really nice piece of equipment. I think this one is new enough, it actually might have some IC chips in it certainly has some transistors but it still has all the benefits of a VTVM with the high input impedance and so on doesn't go quite as high in voltage though so you have about 500 volts AC max there but 1500 volts on the DC so that's good this is very accurate right, at, right after I received this off of eBay uh, did a careful uh, look over to make sure that I could plug it in safely put on the ohms range Hooked up a 1% metal resistor to it, and the meter was dead on. Didn't have to calibrate it or anything for measuring resistance. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work on the DC voltage range. I haven't had the time to look to see what might be wrong with it. And uh, <laughs> the reason I was able to get this fairly inexpensively is that the AC probe is missing. That's a really, really specialized probe. It looks something like this, but it's a lot fatter because there's actually a vacuum tube inside of there. It's a microwave rectifier, which allows this to probe AC circuits running into the hundreds of megahertz and actually ac accurately measure uh, the signals. Uh, at any rate, so <laughs> if you're looking for one of these and just... Uh, if you want to measure microwave AC or uh, even the megahertz AC stuff, make sure you get a, a probe with this that's actually a still good. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, a hard time finding 
and uh, certainly will cost a lot of money to uh, replace that probe. But otherwise, these are really, really nice meters. Uh, so, what I thought I would do is focus on this guy. I haven't done much of anything with this since I got it. I'm not even sure it's fully functional. But I can already tell just by looking at it that this meter needle is going off to the left. It should be right on zero like it is on these guys. A simple way to adjust that is there's a little screwdriver slot on here. And you simply take a small screwdriver, put it in there, and you adjust this to get the needle right on zero. This one they protect under a metal cap, so I'll have to pop that off. And there we go. Let's see if I can center that meter. Huh. I'm not sure. That looks like it's a different kind of connector than a flat bladed screwdriver. So I'll tell you what, I am going to pop this out of the case because I also need to take a look inside. Because there might be some components that uh, need to be replaced. Something else that all three of these have is there's a D cell battery in there that you need to measure resistance. They tend to last a long, long time because they use very, very little current. So if you, um, so I suggest getting um, the longest shelf life battery you have because it's the shelf life is going to determine the life of the battery, not you actually using the meter. So make sure you get a, a nice like energizer or something, something that's not going to leak after six months and drip goo inside your meter, which I have seen inside of this guy, where some of that nasty battery acid leaked out, got onto the components inside. Uh, there's also two tubes inside of each of these, uh, usually a 6AL5 dual diode schematic right here and a 12 AU7 for the uh, the actual measurement uh, part of it uh, I believe it looks like a bridge circuit uh, I got the schematic off of um, the boat anchor archive they have lots of free documentation you can download this is the RCA senior voltomist documentation Full manual, all 28 pages or so. It's very clear, very easy to understand. Nice big print. So I'm going to pop this meter over. Uh, so I pop the meter open and uh, check the tubes and uh, measure. The, check that the resistors are still with a tolerance, and check on the D cell. Make sure it's not leaking. It's not dead. 